will make a cloud of smoke for the glory of God to come down. Somebody here know about the glory of God. And wow, and wow, Aaron was there making the atonement for the sins of the people for that one day. The Bible lets us know that the children of Israel will be outside waiting for the sacrifice to be consumed hallelujah and what Aaron would do with the blood is he would take that blood and he would sprinkle it on the mercy seat he would take that blood and he would sprinkle it he would take his fingers and he would sprinkle it on the mercy seat that was pointing eastward and he would sprinkle the mercy seat seven times and he repeated this process even with his own offering and so thus that would be the process of atonement and the sins of the people were atoned for another year but you know what Pastor Hamlin there was a problem with this Levitical system Uh hallelujah there was a problem with this form of worship the atonement which means to cover the atonement was only supposed to pass God hallelujah the atonement was only supposed to cover up our sins but uh, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that when he would not delight in the blood a bullet and goats when he would not accept the sacrifices of rams and bullocks he said that thou hast prepared a body for me to be an offering for sin so what the bullocks and the goats and the rams could not do Jesus I wish I had a church Jesus not only pacified my sins but he took them away what can wash away my sins nothing Church, I rely and I really feel like praising. I really feel like running. Because the blood of the bullocks could not please them like the blood of our Lord. The people, they began to offer up the sacrifices out of vanity. And God got tired of it. But he said, you know what? I'll create somebody. I'll create an offering. I'll create a sacrifice that is pleasing in my sight. And he shall enter in into the heavenlies and become your sacrifice once and for all. I'm so glad. So understand that the atonement, yes, that the atonement would only pacify the sins, but it would not take them away. And so God needed an offering that would not only pacify him, but take him away. And not only, there was another problem wrong with this Levitical system. And the problem with that was it did, it did not, hallelujah, allow us access unto the veil. Uh We could not go beyond the veil. We could not go beyond into the presence of God because we were so sinful because we were so dirty in the sight of God because we were so evil in the sight of God. And he said no flesh shall glory in his presence. Oh, but when I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go there. I'm sorry. Not yet, brother. But when Jesus became our high priest, the Bible says that now, because he has entered into the holies of holies, you remember when Jesus was crucified and the blood and water ran down the streets of Jerusalem, the Bible says that the earthquake and the veil of the temple was rent, and now we can come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of trouble Jesus blood gave me access to the father so whatever I need I don't have to be like the Catholics and go to the priest I can go to God all by myself So, 
we can go to God all by ourselves. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I don't have to be like the Roman Catholic Church and confess my sins to the priest because if truth be told, there's some things that I don't want my preacher to know about. Uh, y'all, y'all don't want to go with me tonight. Uh -huh. There's some things if I sat down and told you about them, it'll make your mind go wild. And there's some things, sister, that happened in my life that if I told you about them, you'll be like, what? Are you serious? But I'm so glad that I could come to the Father. Oh, I could come to the Father who won't judge me by what I've been through. Because now, when he looks at me, he don't look at me like everybody else does. But when he looks at me, he don't see that nasty top priest. But all he sees is the blood. So, so, tell somebody, thank God for the blood. Thank God. Thank God for the blood. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, I wish I had time to go on and say more, but uh, time won't allow me. And so, just let me say this as a sidebar. I was very, very uh, intrigued by your theme. When I see the blood, uh, speak a word. Now, understand, my dear brothers and sisters, the one of the reasons why the blood is so important, Mother Brown, the reason why the blood is so important is because the blood is the life carrying agent. Uh huh. It is what energizes and mobilizes the body. Uh, the Bible says in the book of Leviticus, chapter 17, around verse 11 or 12, the Bible says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Uh huh. In other words, if you don't have any blood you don't have any life that was the problem with the woman with the issue of blood she just wasn't losing blood but she was losing life uh, I preached a message one time uh, pressing to achieve God's purpose and I was talking about the church and how oh uh, God how the woman in that Bible represents the church and so many of our ministries are losing blood so many of our ministries are losing life so many of our saints are losing blood so many of our saints are losing life uh, but I'm not going to dwell on that right now but the Bible lets us know that the life of the flesh is in the blood the blood naturally has four components it is the white blood cells the red blood cells the platelets and the plasma uh -huh. and not only that it contains a thing called deoxyribonucleic acid which we know as DNA uh, 